Hello again and welcome back to Illegally Sighted. This is Jesse here and I am back for kind of another random accessibility video, maybe a little bit of an update video, but primarily I want to talk about a few accessibility things that have been going on uh, lately in social media and on just online in general, that kind of a thing. So um, really quickly, just want to mention a couple of quick news bites that have happened since the last channel update last week i think i posted that um interestingly capcom did announce a couple of new fighting games that are going to be coming they did a teaser for street fighter 6 no actual gameplay just a couple of seconds of some character footage um, which i don't know like i said it, it could be interesting after that was the initial launch of Street Fighter V, there kind of was a bunch of debacle around that, like it missing modes and some of the netcode not working well, and just, I don't know, it just didn't seem to be really that polished. Um, and of course, Capcom, given its fighting game history, I'm not even really interested in Street Fighter VI. I kind of j half-jokingly refer or re say that I'm not even interested in a Street Fighter game until like at least the third or fourth iteration because Capcom loves to release multiple multiple versions of the same game. You know, I kind of just jokingly always go like, oh yeah, I'm going to wait till the Super Ultra Mega Hyper Fighting Ultra Deluxe Championship Edition. Let's see how many other, how many other modifiers can I add to the title? I mean, it, it does go a little bit ridiculous though. You know, I mean, especially with the Street Fighter 2 series. Um, but yeah, I mean, for fans of that, I know, I mean, Street Fighter, of course, is like the main, one of the main fighting games uh, that people play competitively. But then we get this Capcom fighting collection that's coming out in late June, June 24th. And it does have one version of Street Fighter. It's like Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting, I believe it is. And then um, it's got some other ones. It's got like the kind of the puzzle fighter. Uh, and then there's like five different Darkstalkers games. I remember playing one or two of them on the original PlayStation, but I haven't really played much of them since. And a couple of the other ones I haven't even heard of before. And I think there was like two Darkstalkers games and a couple of other ones that were Japan only until this point. So... I know a lot of people are going to be excited to have those games out as well. So it's a 10-game fighting collection bundle coming out in June. If I do pick it up, I will wait for a sale, just because I'm not very good at fighting games in general. Um, you know, I, I, I enjoy them, but I, I've gotten to more like the Mortal Kombat games and Killer Instinct, or, you know, the D Mortal Kombat DC kind of things, or... Because they have like a more of a story mode in them, um, and I enjoy playing that. I don't have time to sit and devote to like a single fighting game to become really good. So playing competitively online is just not where I'm at right now. I mean, yeah, I'll play competitively, competitively uh, with a friend of mine or something, but randos and stuff. I just like I said, I just don't have time to devote to that kind of fighting game thing right now because I'm doing so many other things. But yeah, so just wanted to let you guys know of that. I know there's a lot of people in the blind community who love fighting games, so these may be of interest to you. I should also mention that the Capcom Fighting Collection is pretty much on any plat every platform. PC, Nintendo Switch, all your Xboxes, your Playstations. So that'll be something to look forward to. And not sure when uh, we'll get more information or when Street Fighter 6 will be released, but that is a thing. So the main thing that I really wanted to talk about today was a few kind of interrelated things about accessibility, game accessibility in particular. There's been a few different things going on on Twitter and likely other social media, YouTube videos, all kinds of things. And just some kind of, shall we say, misinformation on game accessibility, uh, especially of a couple of different titles. So 
To give you a little bit of a background, what's happening is there's been a couple of games that have been sort of highlighted, um, specifically Forza Horizon 5 and the recently released Horizon Forbidden West. I have done videos on both of these, and I've streamed Forza Horizon 5, and I've done a spotlight video on it, and I did an accessibility video on um, Horizon Forbidden West. There's Horizon in both games, interestingly enough. But, so there's been a little bit of confusion, I think especially due to, or from mainstream press, um, a little bit of their, a little bit of a PR problem from the companies, but I think just also some misinterpretation um, from some of the game press, like seeing comments from certain people where, you know, they're getting reports or they're giving reports to say that, oh, these two games are really good recent examples of uh, of full game accessibility for the blind. And neither one of them are. I mean, yes, both of them do have several accessibility features. Forza is technically playable by the blind, and there's a lot you can do in a way. And I've talked about this before. Um, but for those unfamiliar, Forza Horizon 5 is an open world racing game you can take on missions and there's like story missions and races and events and all kinds of different things and the thing with Forza Horizon 5 is that it has narrated menus so that's great but it uses this Anna navigation system where you can kind of hit directions on your d-pad and pull up different types of events and I just, you know, it's cool, but it doesn't work for all events. Um, I can't remember which one specifically. I ran into that uh, during a stream even, I believe. And um, so there's like right away in the game, you don't even have access to Anna. You have to do some prologue kind of introductory races or events, a couple of those. And then when you get to the open world, then you get Anna. But until then... You know, you don't really have that ability. And some events don't actually work with Anna. And then when you're driving as a totally blind player, you don't really have... You have some control, but, like, you don't have a lot of, like, free driving ability when you're on route or in a race because... Basically, what you end up doing is holding down the right trigger, your accelerate button, and you go. Uh, the car pretty much steers itself. You can make fine adjustments and kind of steer around people, listen to the audio to kind of navigate around cars in a race or something. But there's not really a lot you can do. So the subtleties of slowing down and speeding up and steering and how to navigate through a pack and, you know, not do it, you know, not do dirty racing where you're smashing into everybody, that kind of a thing. You know, if you want to really get into more of the simulation or actual just even racing piece of it, you really can't quite do that at this point, at least to the level that a sighted player can. You know, there's, there's turning assist, there's um, braking assist, there's all kinds of things that anybody can use as well. And you can dial those up or down however you like. Um, but in addition with the kind of staying on route, it just doesn't do that. And then when you are getting near an objective, it'll sometimes tell you that you're near. Sometimes it'll tell you that you're there, but sometimes it won't. So you'll end up passing it. So it's not, in, you know, it's not super consistent. Is it playable? Eh, yes. But is it like independently equal to what a sighted pl uh, player's experience would be? No. No, it isn't. Uh, Horizon Forbidden West recently did a video for that, and it's actually doing very well. So I'm glad to see that. Um, but this is an open-world third-person action game where you're playing this, uh, f this uh, female character, Aloy, and it's really kind of cool. You've got, like, melee attacks and a bow and arrow and traps and all kinds of different things. It's got these like robotic dinosaurs and it's a really neat world, but even I would say as a low vision user, 
I do have, it's funny, I've listened to a couple of podcasts, even from uh, fully sighted players, and even some of them, uh, one in particular, I can't remember which one it was yesterday, but I was listening, and one of the fully sighted players was like, yeah, it's a really beautiful environment, but sometimes I even have trouble figuring out what I'm supposed to do or where to go, because like Aloy's, sometimes she'll say little things like, oh, I should hit that switch over there. I wonder if that'll be lowered from this platform or, you know, whatever, but she'll kind of mumble it. And some of the visual aspects where there's so much foliage and trees and extra detail that even they overlook things in the environment. So it's not even just a low vision thing, but I had to chuckle when I heard that from a fully sighted podcaster the other day. Um, you know, but like they, the reason these two games come up is because like Forza, there was, there was somebody who there, there was some place that was saying that like, Oh yeah, this, you know, this game is blind ex accessible. Um, is it blind playable? Yes. Is it, like I said, in, independently playable equally to what a sighted player would experience? Definitely not. And then there was a tweet from the developer of for um, Horizon Forbidden West. So many horizons. And um, they're like, you know, yes, we have all these accessibility features, making the game playable by everyone. And some mainstream press, games press, got kind of got wind of these types of things. And they're kind of incorrectly stating that these games are blind friendly and blind playable, blind accessible. Um, Horizon Forbidden West specifically, they are doing, they have like a co-pilot mode, kind of like how Xbox does system wide. And, you know, they're saying, oh, well, you know, uh, a sighted player can help a blind player or, you know, and, you know, this could be for any number, not just blind and sighted, but like maybe somebody who is an in inexperienced gamer. Maybe you have a, a spouse or friend or family member and you're just enjoying the game and you don't like playing the combat and you like playing the puzzles. So having the co-pilot say, okay, I'm going to do the traversal stuff and hey, you like the combat? Let's just, you know, take turns back and forth. You could use it for that, but as far as accessibility goes, you can also use it for things like, you know, again, a blind player being able to do some of the combat or do some of the traversals with sighted assistance, but then for things that are really a lot more tricky or for actual navigating the world, the sighted player can chip in on their controller. Is that kind of a solution? I would argue it's not an accessible solution. It's kind of a patch, um, but it shouldn't be what we are shooting for. And nor I don't think that's what the developers aren't aren't um, aiming for either. So there's kind of been with that particular. There's been this. Um, there's been some people calling out like, oh well, oh there was a blind consultant that supposedly. Uh, consulted on the accessibility of Horizon Forbidden West, and God, what are they doing? If they think that that a co-pilot mode is what blind players need, and that's that that makes it accessible, God, are they wrong? And they're stupid. And you know, I've heard all kinds of different things in the last several days. And here's what I think really happened. Yes, the developer did actually probably get one or more disabled consultants to come in to help with uh, help with ideas for accessibility. And of course, some features are more easy to implement than others. And total blind accessibility, like navigation assists and waypoints and traversal things, I mean, everyone goes back to The Last of Us too. I mean, I reference it a lot here even. But like... The problem is, is I believe they probably got these consultants in pretty late on in development They're like oh well yeah we should add some accessibility that seems to be really becoming a thing so they were probably well into development and they had all their core systems in place already well then what happened well then um the 
they really couldn't do the amount of detail for the current game, you know, for Forbidden West. They're like, well, where we're at right now, we probably can't put enough features in to make this world easily navigable by a, by a blind player. So, because we can do this other thing, let's at least do this so that you can work with a sighted player as a solution for what we can do at this point. So, it was kind of like, well, we can't do this, but let's at least add this feature or these features. You know, we got some low vision features where you can highlight, like, uh, traversal points like ledge grabs and and things like that. But, you know, it is... Should they have done the consulting earlier? Sure, absolutely. Then they could have maybe worked some of this navigation stuff into a... You know, into their game more from the beginning, and then it might have worked. Um, but I think that's where developers need to really start being able to get used to, you know, don't just do this a couple months before launch. You know, especially if you've got a really complex game like this, you know, whether it's open world or not, but if you've got this really um, complex game and game engine and mechanics, you really got to start getting... Uh, end users and blind consultants or disabled consultants or whatever group you're wanting to target, you need to get them in as soon as possible while you're not just developing content, but that while you're actually developing the mechanics and the engines and the tools that you're going to use to actually make the game, because that's the really, especially with something so complicated as, as, um, you know, making a 3D world compatible or playable for a blind player. There's a like, and you know, for blind players, like you have to understand, it's not just like, oh, put some navigation markers and some audio pings and boom, we're done. There's some weird, like there's a lot of like scripting and just God only knows what goes into it. I can only imagine what has to go into it. So like, I get the frustration. I agree with the frustration, but you know, there's a lot more to it than just adding a few audio cues here and there or just adding menu, like, yes, menu narration, I would love that in every single game. But does just, does menu narration blind accessible make? No, it does not. Um, because you, depending on the game, you are going to likely need more than that. So, you know, that's one thing. Um, the Horizon Forbidden West is that's really, it's not the blind consultant's fault. Like, you know, they probably worked out, like I said, they worked out a thing and said, well, if you can't make it independently playable for me now, or people, players like me for now, <clears throat> can we at least have these features that would allow, at, le at least allow us to enjoy it in some fashion? And that's where I think they landed on with the Forza, or not the Forza, the Horizon Forbidden West thing. And likewise with the um, Forza Horizon 5. You know, that was last year. But again, that's sort of coming back into play because it's a recent example. And, um, you know, yeah, people, you know, this also ties into the games difficulty you know does oh does just making an easy mode make it accessible uh it can help but not all people want an easy mode some people really really want a good challenge uh but we just need some different assists to know let's say in a action game like sifu you know it's a 2d action kind of beat em up you need to know split second tells for an enemy to go, oh, do I need a block? Do I need to dodge? Do I need to dodge low or high? Can I, can I sidestep? You know, how, when can I attack or when do they start blocking? I mean, I was watching a video for Sifu the other day of just kind of explaining for anyone some techniques on how to get through a certain level of the game that's currently kicking my ass. And, you know, I'm watching it going, yeah, it was kind of helpful, but there's so much to it, you know, on the surface. Yeah, you kick and punch and grab and whatever, but there is a lot of mechanics and a lot of systems going into that game. And so, 
you know, would an easier mode be helpful? Yeah, and some people might really want that. But some people just want a better way to be able to enjoy the mechanics and systems that are already there so that they can play the game on the original level that the developers intended. Or, you know, like I said, you get all the gamers that, you know, get all in a fit saying, well, if we add an accessibility mode, that's just ruining the game and ruining, ruining the intent. Well, no, it really isn't because you can play it on the hard difficulty. People can play it however they want. So if you don't want to use the easy mode, if you don't want to use the hard mode, don't. You know, I mean, it's, 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 it's as simple as that. Um, but the whole, you know, like the co-pilot thing with uh, Forbidden West and then the kind of automated driving system in Forza Horizon 5, these are both sort of examples of where a game can kind of be playable for an audience. Like, I would not say Forbidden West is playable by a blind person independently, really, at all. Even as a low vision user, my specific low vision, I had trouble. Now, could somebody else with low vision be able to more easily play it? Sure, probably. You know, I mean, I've seen other blind or low vision um, streamers or YouTubers play it. You know, a, a one that's pretty popular, Steve Saylor. Maybe he can play it. Maybe he can't. You know, I'm not sure. Uh, but he his vision is totally different than mine. So, yeah, maybe it's accessible to him, and maybe it's not for me. But we both have to be careful in how we label these games because I can say, oh, yeah, this, this game is really accessible for me, and so I think other blind players or low vision players could play it. I still want to point out where I have problems and I say, well, hey, if you are low vision, these are some areas that you may or may not have trouble with. Um, you know, look at the footage that I have, look at my gameplay, listen to my descriptions on what I find helpful, what I have trouble with, and make your own decision because, you know, everybody's disability is different. So, but then the other piece of this is, like I said, the mainstream games press is actually starting to pick up on this more which on the base level is great we want more mainstream games coverage covering game accessibility absolutely that's great because that can be just a, hopefully that'll be just uh, become just as common as many other game features but if you're incorrectly reporting that and then let's say i'm a game developer and I see these articles on Forza Horizon 5, or I see an article on Horizon Forbidden West, or any other na any other game. And this article is just, you know, praising the game for, oh, this is, this is a great accessible game for this group, and la-da-da. So let's say I'm making a racing game, and I see these articles, and I go, oh, so really what all really we need to do is we just need to have like an auto-follow-the-road thing. And as long as a blind person can hold down the accelerator, that's enough. That, that makes this game blind playable. That's what they want. Um, and no, a lot of us don't want just that. We want it to go further. You know, we want to have as much fine control of the vehicle as anyone else would. Um, likewise, in an action game like The Last of Us or Her uh, Forbidden West or whatever, you know, we want to be able to not just have sighted assistance to help us through the world, but, yeah, narrated menus and inventory screens and such, but just to be able to even navigate the world and understand, like, oh, okay, i got to climb this ledge, i got to jump from here to here, there's some enemies in, you know, in front of me or to my left, um, oh, there's some crafting materials I find in the environment, all these things that are currently starting to happen in some games... Like, these are things that need to be put in, and it's not just about the accessibility, or not just about the difficulty modes. Um, would I appreciate a difficulty mode in some games that don't have them? Uh, sure, and it's not even just for an accessibility reason. You know, I'm fairly busy. You know, I have a day job. I have consulting gigs. I participate in XR Access. I have other projects I want to work on and need to work on. 
And I just, I want to have some downtime too. And I want to just, sometimes I just want to enjoy a game. Sometimes I want to be super powerful and just wreck people, you know, in the game and just, mm, you know, just, just dominate the enemies. And sometimes I want to challenge, you know, sometimes I just want to play through the game to enjoy the story. And then once I've enjoyed the story and if I really like the gameplay, I will go back and play it on a higher difficulty because maybe I want to try some different uh, dialogue options or, you know, branching storylines. But then when I'm doing that the second time, I can play it at a harder difficulty level and, you know, get deeper into the combat or exploration or whatever it happens to be. So, you know, those are just some things I wanted to chat about. Um, you know, we, we have to be careful how we report that games are accessible. You know, um, like, you know, I don't, cons I don't tell people that I'm, that I'm blind. Yes, I'm legally blind, visually impaired, illegally sighted, whatever you want to call it. Um, but a lot of games that I do play, I play visually. And I let people specifically know if there are games that I play or that I cover that are specifically designed for blind players or mainstream games that happen to be blind accessible, like Sequence Storm, The Last of Us 2, or um, Skullgirls, whatever. Uh, that's kind of where I'm at, you know. Um, and I, like I said, I get the frustration of blind players because, again, we're still not really at the point. We're starting to see a lot more accessibility features in games, which is excellent. You know, we're getting control remapping. We're getting subtitle options. We're getting some low vision options even, you know, maybe contrast or things like that. But when it comes to completely blind or severely visually impaired, yeah, I mean, just because it's it's there's a little bit more to it and it's a little more difficult and we haven't quite figured out, you know, a good, a good way to do it. And every game is different. So there's not really a standard set thing that you can do. Um, but where games are adding lots of accessibility features, blind players are still getting rather left behind. And that is just the sad truth of it right now. I mean, I, I won't, argue any other way, you know, right now. I'm um, sure there are a couple here and there that do it, but yeah, even a lot of games that I've covered where I've said, yeah, this game has, you know, a do half a dozen, dozen or more accessibility features or settings. These are still not totally blind playable, at least very easily. So I think we just need to really help developers and help them kind of crack the you know, crack the code, so to speak, or just try to figure out ways for different types of games. You know, what can we do? What kind of intuitive things could we think of to make a platformer or a racing game or a first-person shooter or a role-playing game? What, you know, yes, there's going to be differences between games in each of those genres, but, like, what can we do to at least give a fair starting point? And I really, like, again, if you're a developer watching this, I really just want to say reach out to people as early as you possibly can in development because you know even before the game is released if you let's say you're developing a game for two years and you bring people in you know people with disabilities in three four months out from launch yeah you have stuff to work with um but for design decisions that and features that need you know, basically to rework the game a certain way, by that time your engine is done, your core design is done, and pretty much you're basically polishing the game and and adding actual content. So it may be, at that point, it may be too late to really add some of these more complex systems, like let's say a blind navigation system so that a blind person can get around an environment independently um the earlier that you can work with people the better um and finally just uh you know a final thing on that note you know i was just in a meeting um an xr access meeting and one of the topics that we talked about was sort of on this topic 
of you know this myth from developers that says yeah but if i have to design for accessibility it's going to make my game boring or it's going to make it less visually pleasing or it's going to make it's going to compromise my design that absolutely doesn't have to happen you know um yeah you can have difficulty modes sure or you can add text to speech or you can add large fonts you can add controller remapping you can add subtitles, whatever you want to do. If people don't want to use them, they don't have to. And, you know, it's quite clear, both from an indie game or a AAA game, there are enough examples out there. I mean, come on, Forza Horizon is freaking beautiful visually. And even though it's not, you know, it's blind playable, but it's not fully blind accessible, so to speak. Like, even though a blind person can play it, sort of, um, it's still a visually and audible, audibly stunning game. Look at The Last of Us 2. You know, there are totally blind players who have um, not only played it and beaten it, but they've played it and beaten it on the highest difficulty setting. You know, and just like uh, I keep seeing, you know, from Ian Hamilton, uh, shout out to him, but, you know, he said several times that you know, yes, everyone says The Last of Us 2 and like, oh, this is like the perfect accessible game. I, you know, there are still some things that even they didn't get around to doing that they wanted to do. And there are still people who um, have either a disability or are unable to play the game despite all these accessibility features. So even with that game, as wonderful and awesome as it is, there are still people... Um, that are unable to play it or play it well. So even Naughty Dog knows like, Hey, there's even more we can do or we can figure out. So I know I'm kind of rambling at this point and going over things, but I wanted to touch on these things just because I've been seeing a lot of grumbling and, and accusations and misreporting and all kinds of just, you know, different things but I've also seen some really good explanations and, you know, otherwise good positive coverage of it. Um, but really, there's been just a lot of good explanations by, like, Ian or the developers or people with other people with disabilities <clears throat> who are consultants, you know. Um, so, I... People who are wondering about these types of things, I just did want to cover that a little bit for today's video. So I believe I'm just going to upload this. And rather than doing a stream archive, since this is a timely thing and it is regarding accessibility, I think I'm just going to unlock this for Monday's video and then resume Monday streams next week, unless something else crazy happens. But anyway... Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at BGFH79, twitch.tv slash illegally cited, illegally cited.com, and right here on YouTube. Plenty more to come on the channel, and I'm kind of getting involved in a few other things that I can't quite talk about yet, but I can't wait until I am able to tell you guys. So I'll leave you guys, I'll leave everyone with that. And until next time, I will chat with everyone again later.